Hi, my name is Lou Rahm, and today I want to be taking a look at The War and Conflict That We See in American War by Omar el Akkad from a historical standpoint and how it combines uh, both modern day war tactics along with some sci-fi elements to create a dystopian backdrop for our novel. So the main conflict that we see within the American War is the Second American Civil War. Now, this draws both from historical comparisons as well as adding both modern and futuristic elements to create the background for the novel. So this Second American Civil War is both futuristic and historical in nature. It has a lot of grounding in historical wars fought both on American soil and abroad. And those heavy parallels in the answering of key what-ifs within those historical wars in the context of this novel kind of help to shape a war that is very much feels realistic, but also is able to answer and create the backdrop for the sci-fi novel that we see and that we read through. So the historical connections. So the war is being fought in the American War has connections to both the American Civil War from the 1800s and then as well as the Revolutionary War. So obviously the American Civil War is an easy comparison to make. We have similar fighting sides in this. We have the free southern states now versus the larger American uh, continent as a whole. So that creates kind of a familiar backdrop to the American Civil War. Obviously, the reasons for secession and the means that started the secession are different in this. We actually have an assassination of a U.S. president, and then we have a secession based on the banning of fossil fuel usage. So it creates that kind of sci-fi element of bringing in climate change and what would happen if the U.S. decided to restrict an aspect that many southern states, at least in this novel, as well as in modern day, heavily rely on these fossil fuel industries. And then it's also utilizing something called historiographic metafiction. So historiographic, meta, historiographic metafiction is the incorporation of three domains. So you have fiction, history, and theory. The combination of these three allow for this novel to be able to tell a basically war story um, while also feeling realistic while set in the near future. So it, it has to draw on these heavy historical implications, combine the fiction where it is necessary, and that being like the climate change, uh, the names of the actual fighting forces and the reasons for fighting uh, and then combine the th and then add the theory of okay how would a war break out given these settings and that connection and the concoction that Omar el Akkad does to be able to create this setting in this world is very 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 key in order to make this novel as dark and heavy of a war novel as it ends up being it is truly a very very sobering war to read through as far as most wars are told as it has a high level of death and a very low level of um, kind of appreciation for the what we view as the modern code of war of civilian lives mattering and kind of protection of civilian areas and then we also get to see how it is utilized in respect to major wars fought on american soil so it takes pieces from the civil war and the revolutionary war throughout it uh, the Revolutionary War, we get to see the guerrilla fighting. We also get to see that in modern wars like the Vietnam War. Um, but the Revolutionary War is the American precedent for, uh, for guerrilla fighting. And then in the Civil War, we get to kind of see the lethality of if there was a session in a Civil War amongst one nation on an American scope, while also getting to see the sides and the kind of this disconnect between Southern thinking and Northern thinking. So a futuristic war with the chilling connections to modern day. This was one of the more sobering things that I read in an interview that Omar Arkad said is nothing in the book hasn't happened. It just happened to other people and it happened far away. So everything in this novel, the bioweapons, the terrorism, um, the civilian deaths, uh, stray bombings, destruction of cities, all have precedence. And that the things that are changed are so minimal since it's near future that it creates this very, very, very chilling reality of what a second civil war could theoretically look like. And that level of fear and uh, uneasiness while reading it as someone who lives in America, and I'm sure as someone, while well, Omar el grew up in Egypt and lived in Canada, views America of what could potentially happen. So the modern war tactics that we're seeing kind of help to show this lethality of a potential civil war on a modern scale. And that, that is something that kind of historians have talked about of what happened if the American Civil War that we saw in 1860 happened today. And what would that look like? So that evolution, we get to kind of see a glimpse of from Amara El-Khad's uh, video in the near future modern day scope. 
So the merging of these old and new. So we get to see a lot of these connections. Uh, so the changing some of the key deciding factors from historical wars and then also bringing forward some of the haunting what ifs of also some of the historical and modern wars that have been fought. So we get to see this through the secession over the government restriction, the parallels in modern day politics, both domestically and abroad, uh, the divide for countries in the secession or rebellion that we see uh, overseas is not uncommon and it's very, very uh, realistic. So it helps to add to that. Um, the sci-fi elements that are brought in are obviously the fossil fuel element and the climate change, but the actual feelings and kind of mistrust is, is a very modern aspect of a uh, Southern mistrust for the North. We see that both in a historical aspect and we also see it's more modern day aspect in both voting and then in opinions. So we get to see that historical connection by the Southern states. And then we also get to see a version of the spark. So the spark I've always viewed in conflict of war of what something has to start the war. Uh, it's the first shot fired. It's um, someone invading, uh, someone being assassinated in this case. World War I is the precedence, obviously, that is the easiest to draw with the assassination of France, Archduke Franz Ferdinand. Um, we get to see here the assassination of the U.S. president via suicide bomber, which is a very kind of sobering aspect as it combines what we think of as, at least in American, is viewed as very Middle Eastern terrorism, unrest, war-torn, uh, with American politics, war, and uh, kind of a historical implication of the assassination of Abraham Lincoln and what would happen if Abraham Lincoln is assassinated before or during the Civil War and how does that change things? Like, does that create the divide? Um, does that change how the North fights, how the South fights? All these questions. Um, so that, that co combination of the historical parallels throughout history with the modern uh, terrorism kind of sci-fi elements create this very, very interesting dystopian realm to kind of write and play in from a world building standpoint and a very, very dark area to read in as a reader. So then the significance to the story and the dystopian setting. So the merging of the modern war tactics that have occurred in a global capacity for decades in a setting that forces readers to not detach from the grim realities. This is something I think is extremely intentionally done by Omar al -Akkad, um, especially considering that the book is called American War. So it can be assumed that more Western uh, American, maybe Canadian, uh, European people would read this book is it forces you to not run from the realities that we see overseas. And we see all the time in governments bombing their own people, destroying their own cities, um, civilian lives being just thrown into the fray, refugee camps, um, people running from war across the, the world. And it, we can't run from it because it's forced to put into an American setting of, okay, we all, America is always viewed above this. When America is not one of these war torn countries of, okay, this is, in this setting it is created that America is that war torn country and how do the experiences of those trans, those people who are experiencing it in modern day translate while also being in a sci-fi setting to help kind of tell the story. So the tactics and historical connections create a very jarring potential future. Um, that's one of the resounding things I found while researching this novel is that many readers and reviewers viewed it as very, very kind of uncomfortable to read because it is very, very realistic. Um, necessarily, not necessarily the same players, the sci-fi elements um, might not obviously play out the same, but the conflict at its very, very base level of uh, U.S. insurrection, secession, and what that could look like if sides operated under the modern tactics of suicide bombing, bioweapons, and things of that nature is not far off from what could be the reality. So then the question that I kind of want to pose to you is with most of the war acts within American war having occurred either domestically or internationally, how did seeing this turmoil, the war-torn country brought to an American setting, change your perspective on the wars often seen overseas, uh, if at all, both in your reading and then also in your kind of your general word view? Because I definitely, post reading this novel, had shaped, uh, changed my view of world uh, battles and wars a lot more uh, because of just how harrowing it, it truly is and it really kind of puts in perspective the absolute atrocities that some people are forced to live through and i think that's one of the great things that dystopian novel can do is it can force you to take something that you think could never happen and put enough 
realistic elements in to make it ask you a very, very serious what if. Um, so that was one of the things that really drew me to the American War uh, novel, and especially how he chose to write the conflict in the war itself. Uh, I think that's something as a writer you can take from in both sci-fi, uh, regular fiction, historical fiction, or um, fantasy is that telling a war but having it have historical precedents or at least bringing in historical elements is very, very important to being able to have that war feel extremely realistic for those reading. Um, so I know in fantasy, we always try to uh, incorporate tactics or uh, situations that we see in historical wars um, that kind of help create an element of realism that is often not brought. And same thing can happen in sci-fi, uh, kind of bringing that realism to something that is so uh, fantastical or so far off is extremely important to help that reader stay grounded into your character development, the fear, uh, and the bloodshed that they're, they're seeing and keeping them kind of grounded in those emotions and not able to kind of drift off into like a distance where they are so far away from the potentiality of that, that they can't actually come to gripe with the emotions that are being expressed. So I think that is one of the things that American War really brings to the table. And I think that Omar al uh, does an amazing job of creating a war and a setting that creates feelings of like dread and uncomfortableness when reading because uh, it brings kind of all the fear of kind of modern wars fought across the country to an American setting and then adds the historical significance to make it feel enough realistic that you're nervous while reading, which is, I think, a very impressive feat. So thank you guys so much for listening.